Beloved, God is good that has given us another chance. God is good that he is faithful. God bestows his favor upon us. And so we continue in his presence, living according to his will, because he desires us. And we also, he desires for us, and, and also to say that we shall keep praising God, we shall keep trusting God in this land of the living, because he cares about us. And so we give time to think about Jesus' life on earth. We know that actually Jesus spent years in ministry. When he started his public ministry, he spent three years on earth. And this started after the baptism by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. And after he did that, he called to himself people that he called disciples, men that he called apostles later on. And the reason why we have to give a series of talk about what Jesus did when he was on earth, but we are going to concentrate on the 12 disciples. But this time around, we are going to share about these men. What did Jesus do before he chose the 12? And after he had chosen them, what did he do with them? What did he show them? Because Jesus, after the ministry, we shortly celebrated Easter, and time will come when Jesus will be going back to heaven, and indeed he went, but after his ascension, what happens? So the 12 men Jesus called, whom he called apostles, he gave them an assignment. They were disciples on assignment. They were apostles on assignment. And therefore we, who proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ, who confess Christ as Lord and Savior, we are here on assignment. And so we are going to base on Luke chapter 6, verse 12, that Jesus calls the men whom he spent time with. And here the Bible says, Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And in verse 13, the Bible says, and when it was day, he called his disciples to himself. And from them, he chose 12 of whom he also named apostles. And the names are mentioned here. Verse 14, Simon, whom he also named Peter and Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon called the Zealot. Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, whom, he, whom also became a traitor. Now, friends, we are concentrating on these 12 men and why they were called disciples at first. And so this was a milestone that our Lord Jesus Christ showed us. But first of all, before he chooses them, because before he goes for an assignment, Jesus prays. The Bible says that he spent all night long on, in prayer on the mountain, on the hill. And this connects very, very clearly with the Old Testament portions of Scripture. Remember, before Moses uh, received the Ten Commandments, he was on the raised ground, he was on a mountain, and he was there in the presence of God. Now, Jesus Christ here, is in the presence of God praying before he chooses the 12 people, the men that he calls uh, apostles. And this is very, very critical. This is very, very important for you and for me that before you embark on any assignment that God is calling you to do, be it preaching, be it being going for mission and mission, for mission and evangelism, be it doing anything that you are in the presence of the Lord, embark on that assignment, and, but before you do that, do pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ spent the whole night praying before he chose the 12 men. And this choosing was divine because he had to teach them, he had to encourage them, he has to empower them for the continuation of the ministry. And it's the reason why you and I are ministers in the presence of the Lord. And so in this, the whole thing, Jesus did pray. And we talk about these men. We read Matthew chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. 
It talks about naming them, the 12. We we'll talk about Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. That's much earlier. He also shows us how he called the fishermen. And in Mark chapter 3, verse 13, we also read about Jesus calling the fishermen and the men. And so Jesus chose the men. Which kind of people did Jesus choose? One, these people were Jews. He called them from his, among his own. And before, and before, I mean, so that they would continue with this ministry and spread it like we see in Matthew 28, 19. They are the very people that actually sends out. They were Jews. And these men were uneducated and the commonest of the common. He chose the Lord of this world. He chose men who would be ready to be prepared. The lowly people, the common people, the uneducated people who would be willing to be educated who would be willing to be taught, who would be willing to listen. And they were simple men. This was another characteristic, men of faith, simple faith. No wonder our Lord Jesus Christ mentions about faith, that actually if your faith, that even if it's as small as a mustard seed, smallest, that, that grows. And Jesus began with this uneducated, simple people, that the faith would grow. And the mustard seed that Jesus mentions is exactly about this. And he gave them, there were men who gave up everything. They gave up everything and they followed the Lord Jesus Christ. They were rural men because remember they were fishermen. Although Matthew is called to be, you know, he was a tax collector, but the majority of them were from the rural setting, simple people. And so my friends, what the Lord Jesus Christ desires from me and me is the simplicity, is to show the character of willingness to learn it's only those that have, never, that have never gone to school that will be ready to be taken to class, to P1 because I've never been there, to nursery because I've never been there. You go to P7 because I've never been there and you sit for the exam and you study, you listen to the teacher. And so these people show the simplicity of their faith and Jesus was looking for people such as those. And so friends, our Lord Jesus Christ desires us, we who are his disciples in the same vein, to be a people of simple faith, to be a people that are willing to learn, to be a people that can leave everything and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Jesus spent solid three years training them to be leaders. And so these leaders would lead the church thereon, thereafter. And the point that I'm making here is he prepared them for the, successful, for the successive years to come. They were to be his successors. He prepared for his time of departure. And this is a challenge that comes to us as leaders, that when we come into office, we need to prepare for our departure. And Jesus prepared for his departure before time by choosing these 12 men to carry on with the ministry. And this does not only fall to the leaders in other spheres of life, but including the parents, including you, the parents that could be um, you know, part of this, the congregation that listens to this message, that we need to prepare our children. We need to endow them. We need to empower them. Because someone once said that actually people are busy running about preparing for the future of their children. But listen, they forget to prepare their children for the future. Now, Jesus Christ here shows us a point that our learners are our children. Our disciples are our children. In, the, in, in any case, who is a disciple? A disciple is a learner. A disciple is a student. A disciple is a follower. Now, someone who learns must be a follower. And who is a follower? A follower is someone who exactly does exactly what he has learned or she has learned from the master. And so our children are our learners and they put into practice what we teach them. We help them. Some of us are products of what our parents taught us. Some of us are doing what we're able to do because our parents showed us the way. And it's that way that actually that's enabling us and helping us to do this ministry. And so friends, Jesus within the three years had disciples and it helped him to prepare them. And after he had departed, they continued the ministry. And so I pray for you parents. I pray for anyone who is a leader that you prepare for your departure and prepare meaningfully. 
prepared it meaningfully because the Lord Jesus Christ put in time. He prayed for them. He showed them example. He taught them. He encouraged them. He rebuked them where they had gone in error. And he corrected every time that actually, because actually they had to carry on the ministry. And so this is something actually important for us that this series that we are carrying on, Jesus was preparing his successors and to carry on with the ministry. And therefore we, the leaders, we, everyone, everyone needs to prepare, needs to prepare for the end before from the beginning. So Jesus chose these people and he prepared them ordinary as they were and they became very, very wonderful people and they became preachers, they, be, they became apostles who were sent. And possibly, let me mention, a disciple is a learner, like I've already said, is a student that learns from the master ready to be sent, and picks it as an example. Now, you follow and do exactly what your master has told you to do, and that's a disciple. Now, after you have learned and you are putting into practice, you, you know, you have been sent to go and do that work, you become an apostle. So an apostle from the Greek word, apostolos, means the one who is sent. Now, we need to be qualified to be sent by the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to be qualified with the word in order to go and preach what you have been taught. And so these men, after the three years, were qualified enough. Of course, there were temptations that were in there. Remember Peter denying, and three times, temptations come. Remember some of them running, some of them doing everything that it was. Many of them were in hiding when Jesus was crucified, when Jesus was beaten. But Jesus reinstated them. And so our Lord Jesus Christ, Desires actually, he keeps reinstating us. We fall many times, we are tempted many times, we become filthy many times, but he encourages us to come back and he reinstates us and sends us. And so, before God, in this portion, in this ministry, there's no dustbin. As long as you position yourself, you know, humanly speaking, we fail, but the Lord Jesus Christ desires that you actually we become reinstated, renewed. And in John chapter 21, Jesus calls Peter three times he, before he sent them. He said, you know, do you love me? Do you love me? So a disciple is this person who will show the love and care for the gospel. In God's economy, he exalts the humble. That's another very important uh, milestone that we find here. He and brings down those that are proud. You know, there were leaders at that time. There were, you know, there were teachers. There were priests. But all of the time, all the time, they were actually confrontational to the Lord Jesus Christ. But this man, Jesus actually came to pick the humble. So in God's economy, there is a place for the humble ones. And therefore, humility is the greatest, one of the greatest virtues that actually we Christians need to embrace. The reason why Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible does say, Paul, one of them that actually was called later and become an apostle because they were also sent on the road to, him, to Damascus. He, God, Jesus called him and sent him. Now in this 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says that actually, verse 26, that for you see you are calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. This falls in line exactly with what the Lord Jesus Christ did with, the, with these 12 men. But in verse 28, but the Bible says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And so, friends, I may not be that mighty person, but I know for real for sure that God picks God chooses the humble. So the, the quality that I want to encourage you to have, to be used in the vineyard of the Lord, is the humility. And this is what discipleship will require. Humble enough to learn. Humble enough to repent. Humble, humble enough to forgive. The world is bleeding. It requires men and women who will come back down and put things right. What is killing the leaders, what is killing husbands, what is killing the wives is not to come down and confess and repent and forgive. Because actually it is, these are virtues that these men were taught by the Lord Jesus Christ. So a disciple being a follower, 
and an apostle being someone who is sent, we are told that actually we need to follow in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it was a privilege for them because they had been with the might of the mightiest. Because remember, Paul is saying that actually he called the weak, he called the unwise, he called the uneducated. Now, many of us have our backgrounds. Where we have come from, it's only God who knows. And he desires that we remain people that have a testimony to testify about the goodness of the Lord. Now, the three years were intensive discipleship, and um, it was a course of its own. And God desires, he prepares us. He prepared those men, and he sent them. In Matthew 28, 19, he pronounced, go ye into the world and make disciples of all nations. And now, you are also called to make a disciple in your house. Daddy, mommy, you are called to make, a disciple, to make disciples in your house. And even your neighbors could be your disciples. But it is actually prudent for those that are being taught to the word of God to listen. And listening is a very rare commodity these days. And so we need to ask God that actually the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ humbles us. The teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ humbles us. And so this, this discipleship, these men, show us an example that we need to carry on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to appeal to you to carry on. Don't lose heart. The world is yearning for the word. Of course, people have heard, but the gospel of works, the gospel of acts, the gospel of that can be seen because we are full of talking. People talk, but we want to go down. The disciples were men who were following the Lord Jesus Christ. And the following meant a lot. And so we needed to carry on the gospel of salvation. Salvation in your house. Salvation at your workplace. Salvation in your neighborhood. And acting out the message of salvation. And we know that actually God used these simple men, uneducated men, to reach out to the world. And so I implore you that during this series we shall be talking about the life of these men and including the women that were there. Because actually the 12 were men, but there were women in the background. We shall be talking about them. And one after another, we shall keep, you know, moving on. But the lesson that we pick from there is being humble and being able to listen and do exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ desires us to do. And Jesus did not go in for the proud people. Jesus did not go in for the more educated people. But he went in for those that could listen. And indeed, they, became, they graduated. And after they graduated, they became apostles and they were sent. Now, will you be sent in your house? Will you be sent in your neighborhood? Will you be sent in your church? Are you a member of the choir? Are you a member of, of, of Father's Union, Mother's Union? Are you a member of whichever, wherever you belong? Be a disciple to disciple others. Be an apostle to be able to help others. And may God bless you and watch over you. And as he continues using me, may he continue using you in the ministry that he has called us for. And we are the disciples of this time, of this generation. We are the apostles of this generation. And he shall be continue doing the work of the Lord that he has wished us to do. And that we shall continue in it until he comes. So remain faithful, remain firm. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.